Hello dear students, in this small video we are going to learn some simple concepts and formulae of uniform circular motion. First we have to see what is uniform circular motion. If a body is moving in a circular path with a constant speed, if a body is moving, the, moving in a circular path in a constant speed, then we say that the body is in uniform circular motion, okay, uniform circular motion. If a body is moving in a circular path with a constant speed, we call it as, then the body is said to be in uniform circular motion. <coughs> now let us suppose that a particle is here, okay, at some point A, when the time t is equal to zero, and say <laughs> this is the sense of rotation of the particle, after some time the particle reaches here, okay, say the radius of the circular path, let it be r, okay, angle subtended here is theta, this is length of the arc, I will take either L or equal to S, uh, in uh, trigonometry high school you might have studied S is equal to r theta or L is equal to r theta, correct now? Now, S means uh, length of the arc, if the particle is going from point A to point B, this uh, S or L also becomes equal to distance or displacement, correct now? So therefore, now what I will do, I will differentiate, I will differentiate this equation, okay, with respect to time, with respect to T, remember the differentiation formulae, okay, what happens? ds by dt, ds by dt is equal to differentiation of r theta. What I am doing? I am differentiating the equation both sides. What is this? Yes, yes means displacement. What is uh, rate of change of displacement? It is velocity, correct? Now we know that v is equal to dx by dt, yeah? Then what is r? r is the radius of the circular path, which is always constant. So constants we have to take outside, if you remember. So, r into d theta by dt. Okay, what is d theta by dt? What is theta? Theta means angular displacement. Okay. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll explain you. What is, what is dx by dt? dx by dt means rate of change of displacement, which will give you velocity. Okay. What is d theta by dt? Rate of change of angular displacement. Rate of change of angular displacement will give you angular velocity. Okay, try to understand. So, d theta by dt means it will give you angular velocity. So, v is equal to r omega is the relation between linear velocity and angular velocity. What is v? Velocity of the particle when it is in linear motion. What is omega? Velocity when it is in angular motion. We call it as angular velocity. Okay. Then, we differentiate, again I differentiate this equation v is equal to r omega with respect to t, with respect to time. Then what happens? dv divided by dt is equal to differentiation of r omega. Okay, what is dv by dt? Rate of change of velocity is acceleration. Acceleration. Then r is constant, take it outside, r into d omega by dt. Okay. Okay. Now, what is rate of change of velocity? Rate of change of velocity is equal to acceleration. Therefore, rate of change of angular velocity is called angular acceleration represented by alpha. Okay. Rate of change of angular velocity is called angular acceleration. Therefore, a is equal to r alpha. This is the relation between linear acceleration and angular acceleration okay then we will see what is time period of revolution okay we will see what is time period of revolution time period of revolution means what time required for the particle to complete one revolution okay time period means what time required for the particle time required time required by the particle by the particle to complete to complete one revolution one revolution or to complete the circular path once so therefore since particle is moving in a circular path 
okay in one revolution what is the length of the path that is equal to circumference of the circle correct now therefore time period equal to circumference circumference divided by time taken no, no sir circumference by speed correct now time equal to distance by speed okay what is circumference circumference equal to 2 pi r speed is v okay now see from the equation v is equal to r omega from the equation is v equal to r omega we know that we can write r by v huh? r divided by v equal to 1 by omega so therefore this r by v can be replaced by 1 by omega what happens 2 pi by omega time period equal to 2 pi by omega or we get an equation for angular frequency or angular velocity omega equal to 2 pi by t but we know that frequency means what number of revolutions per second what is the equation for frequency frequency equal to 1 by time period okay hope you know it yeah so what happens 1 by t can be replaced by frequency or omega is equal to 2 pi f so these are the some of the important formulae that you need to know when the particle is moving in a circular motion one is relation between linear velocity and angular velocity v is equal to r omega a is equal to r alpha v is equal to r omega a is equal to r alpha then time period equal to 2 pi by omega omega angular frequency equal to 2 pi by t omega is equal to 2 pi f okay these are some of the equations that you need to know okay when the when we solve problems related to particle moving in a circular motion undergoing uniform circular motion if it is not moving in uniform circular motion so let us suppose that you consider a fan you consider a table fan okay when you switch on table fan how the fan blades will move initially they move slowly then the speed increases 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 correct now what is happening speed is increasing angular velocity is increasing so this is non uniform circular motion in that case okay if the acceleration the rate of increase of velocity is constant then you can use uh, see in uh, first chapter we have studied v is equal to u plus a t x is equal to u t plus half a t square v square equal to u square plus 2 a x these are the equations of motion these are the equations of motion when the body is undergoing uh, body is moving in a straight line with the constant acceleration okay in circular motion if the body is moving with the constant angular acceleration then we can use the equation v is equal to u plus a t x is equal to u t plus half a t square v square is equal to u square plus 2 a x omega is equal to omega naught plus alpha t theta is equal to omega naught t plus half alpha t square omega square equal to omega naught square plus 2 alpha theta so what we have done initial velocity is replaced by initial angular velocity final velocity is replaced by final angular velocity linear acceleration is replaced by angular acceleration displacement is replaced by angular displacement okay these are the kinematic equations for rotational motion if a body is moving with a constant angular acceleration okay sometimes uh, in this case says for example if a body is uh, moving in a circular path okay when a body is moving in a circular path there is some centripetal acceleration correct now there is some acceleration towards the center what is the equation for centripetal acceleration centripetal acceleration equal to v square by r okay the derivation that we are not going to do because it is not required for which course if you are interested the derivation for centripetal acceleration the link i'll put it in the de description please go through it once okay and along with that velocity is ch changing in this direction also means see when the when you switch on the fan see initially for the in the first round here the velocity was less second round velocity is more third round velocity is more correct now what happens linear velocity is ever increasing means what is the direction of velocity direction of velocity is along the tangent that is also increasing tangential velocity is also increasing so therefore there is a there will be a tangential acceleration also this is non uniform circular motion in uniform circular motion what is uniform circular motion if a body is undergoing if a body is moving in a circular path 
with uniform speed always then we call it as uniform circular motion after you switch on the fan after 2 minutes then it is uniform circular motion before that till it attains the maximum speed it is non uniform circular motion in non uniform circular motion there will be two accelerations one is centripetal acceleration that is towards the center another one is tangential acceleration okay what is resultant acceleration this is resultant acceleration so using pythagoras theorem we can write a square is equal to at square plus ac square correct now so therefore resultant acceleration is equal to square root of square root of square of tangential acceleration plus square of centripetal acceleration this is how you find the resultant acceleration when the body is undergoing non uniform circular motion now based on these uh, uh, formula we are going to solve three simple problems try to understand calculate the angular speed of a wheel making 240 revolutions per minute okay angular speed of a wheel making 240 revolutions per minute okay angular speed omega equal to theta by t correct na what is angular speed angular displacement by time okay because in straight line step chapter what we have studied v velocity is equal to displacement by time angular velocity is equal to angular displacement by time correct na hope you can understand now so what is angular displacement for one revolution angular displacement is 2 pi hope you know this okay for one revolution angular displacement is 360 degree or 2 pi correct na 2 pi yeah for 240 revolutions 240 into 2 pi correct na divided by per minute okay divided by 60 60 goes four times four times 4 into 2 pi is 8 pi 8 pi radian per second 8 pi radian per second so theta is measured in radian time is measured in seconds so this is the angular speed of a wheel which is making 240 revolutions per minute hope you understood next next problem a stone tied to the end of a string 2 meter long is rotated in a horizontal circle with constant speed if the stone makes 10 revolutions in 20 seconds calculate the magnitude and direction of acceleration okay it is rotational motion acceleration there are two formula one is acceleration equal to v square by r but here velocity is not given correct now what is given length is given then uh, constant speed that speed is not given stone makes 10 revolution in 20 seconds calculate the direction of acceleration one more equation for acceleration you can write using the formula v is equal to r omega okay i'll substitute here v square means what r square omega square divided by r one r r gets cancel acceleration is equal to omega square r but what is omega omega is equal to 2 pi f whole square into r 2 pi f whole square into r but what is given here frequency is given 10 revolutions in 20 seconds correct na so now i can find out frequency so acceleration is equal to omega square r is my formula correct now omega is equal to 2 pi f 2 pi f whole square into r what is frequency frequency 10 revolutions in 20 seconds so therefore 1 by 2 revolutions per second correct na 1 by 2 revolutions per second so this is the frequency 1 by 2 hertz okay so now what happens 2 2 square is 4 okay pi square 3.14 into 3.14 it is around 9.8 but i'll write 10 okay pi square usually in entrance exams you write 10 into f f is 1 by 2 1 by 2 whole square is 1 by 4 correct na f square yeah then r what is r r is r is 2 meter okay so 4 4 gets cancelled 10 into 2 20 angular acceleration is 20 20 meter per second square what is the direction since uh, the body is moving in a circular path the direction of acceleration is always acting towards the center direction is towards the center and its magnitude is 20 meter per second square next one more last simple a motor car is traveling at 30 meter per second on a circular road okay it is traveling at a 30 meter per second of radius 500 meter radius 500 meter okay 
it is increasing its speed at the rate of 2 meter per second square. What is the acceleration? Means, since the particle is moving in a circular path, there should be some centripetal acceleration. One more thing is, it is increasing its speed at the rate of 2 meter per second square. That speed is also increasing. Means, it is not uniform circular motion. Speed is also increasing. What is the acceleration? Uh, here, there are two accelerations. Resultant acceleration is equal to square root of square root of ac square plus at square. Speed is increasing means speed is increasing at the rate of 2 meter per second square means what they have given tangential acceleration is given that is 2 meter per second square. What is centripetal acceleration? Centripetal acceleration is equal to v square by r. Correct? Na? V square by r. What is v they have given? Car is travelling at 30 meter per second. 30 square 30 into 30 900 divided by r 500 okay okay centripetal acceleration is 9 by 5 900 by 500 9 by 5 is 1.8 okay 1.8 so resultant acceleration is uh, ac square 1.8 1.8 whole square plus 80 square 2 square okay so 2 square is 4 1.8 whole square is less than 4 maybe it is 3.5 Okay, uh, 4, 3.5, 7.5, square root of 7.5 is less than 3, is less than 3, somewhere around 2.7, 2.7 meter per second square. So this is how you find acceleration. Okay, if a body is moving with uniform speed, then if you are asked to find out acceleration, simply use the formula, centripetal acceleration is equal to V square by R. If it is moving with only 30 meter per second speed, always constant. But here in this problem, what they have given? Initially, it is 30 meter per second. Then the speed is increasing at the rate of 2 meter per second square. Means here, are, here there are two types of acceleration. One is centripetal acceleration. Another is tangential acceleration. Then what you have to do? Resultant acceleration is equal to square root of EC square plus AT square. Okay, hope you can understand this. Thank you very much.